Afternoon, it's uh, Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of the European markets for end of day's trading session Friday, the 19th of May 2017. Please be sure to visit TradeSignal, signals and market updates from leading providers at www.tradesignal.com. You can certainly download the app at the Google Play and the Apple App Store. Okay, now in terms of the uh, next uh, potential move in the market, let's try and decipher this. Let's look at the numbers first of all, the stats for the day. Uh, remarkable that we uh, certainly kept uh, afloat, uh, given the fact that we've uh, obviously sold off quite viciously on Wednesday and Thursday to a large extent. Let's look at these stats. FTSE finishing up 34 points, ignoring the uh, the weakness uh, overall. Uh, German Jacks as well finishing up 48 points. If, ignoring the weakness again now the, the weakness i'm referring to is a stronger euro the euro touching 1.12 okay and uh, the uh, gbp certainly reversing over given the flash crash overnight and remains above 1.3 okay so cac finishing up 34 footsie mib up 282 points a whopping 282 the ibex and the stock 600 as well okay so uh, at present we have news with regards to mr weedman now potentially replacing draghi so that again is interesting and also Mr. Carney has been seen at the White House and he seems to be departing as well. As to why those two pieces of information are not sending the markets lower, it's be totally beyond me. It's amazing how these markets are certainly being kept afloat, uh, kept afloat okay? So uh, the markets at present, uh, certainly finishing uh, positive from the European market perspective and let's see if that can actually maintain itself. Okay, now let's uh, look at the actual news flow, uh, news flow uh, since my morning video. Uh, we've had uh, consumer confidence from the eurozone coming in on the weaker side. Okay, uh, but huge rig count as well coming in stronger than expected, therefore negative oil. And we have seen a slight reversal there. Other than that, there's been nothing really other than Canadian retail sales. Uh, okay, coming in stronger than expected, but inflation coming in weaker than expected. Uh, current account, obviously, I discussed this morning. But one of the major bearish news was the uh, stronger inflation data out in Germany coming in, the PPI data coming in at... Uh, at 0.4% uh, versus the 0.2%, so almost double uh, what was expected, and therefore one would presume that it was negative, especially given the fact that the euro now is up to 1.12 now, uh, the GBP USD is above 1.3020 now, and therefore one would presume and uh, interpret that as being risk negative, especially for European equities, and that hasn't been the case, which again is totally baffling to me at present. And this whole market really has been baffling ever since. Mr. Trump has come on board. Uh, also, in terms of the uh, this week as well, the uh, emotional uh, roller coaster, especially in the downside, and yet the markets are right back where we are. We're currently on the S and P back at 23.85, 23.86, and we're only 13 points off the highs. I mean, the high was 2400. Uh, the Nasdaq is back at 56.70 now. That's almost what just 50 points off the highs. So all that hoo ha, noise, impeachment, blah blah blah, and uh, the markets more or less haven't budged at all if you think of it from that perspective. Okay, so the correction hasn't lasted. So let's see exactly where we are from a uh, technical perspective, as always, to uh, actually cut out the noise and, send, and tell us where we stand. Okay, so the weekly chart of the German DAX is still above the previous breakout. So again, one would obviously interpret that as being bullish. But the counter argument is that with the euro obviously being at 1.12 now, and obviously talk of Draghi being replaced with Mr. Weedman. And Mr. Weedman, as we all know, is a hawk, and that certainly doesn't uh, obviously help the... Um, the bullish picture, let's just say that. The bullish picture certainly isn't helped by that at all, okay? Uh, and therefore, you are looking at higher rates, uh, okay? Less monetary stimulus, and that doesn't obviously support the recovery and therefore leaves France in, in a real disarray. Uh, and it certainly seems like they want to go down the option of the US route in terms of fiscal potential stimulus, but we'll see. Nothing's been confirmed as of yet, okay? So we'll see exactly how the market responds. Okay, so... Looking at this market again, 60-minute chart, you're into previous support equals resistance, so you are looking at weakness here, okay, at 12,660, 12,650 on the German DAX, currently trading uh, below that after hours, okay, we certainly hit that H&S uh, target on the 60-minute chart on the German DAX, so again, let's just ignore that for now, let's take that out of the equation, okay, so previous support equals resistance here, if you do break higher, then you are looking at 12,700 next resistance, and then you eventually, you have gap fill as well up here, okay, so watch out for gap fill above okay but for now previous support equals resistance and therefore one would presume this market will be kept in check in this zone here 12660 127 12680 and 12700 okay so looking for weakness also if you use your fibonacci retracement tool take it from the pivot high take it to the pivot low and you're into that fib 50 percent so therefore you are looking for weakness in the german dax 10 minute chart you certainly have uh, horizontal resistance certainly expected to hold 
you have horizontal support here and then you have gap filled just below so a gap certainly remains unfilled especially with the euro usd being at that 1.12 i'd have expected that gap to close by now and that certainly hasn't been the case which is quite interesting okay we'll see exactly how that unfolds right okay so that's where we stand in terms of the german dax so let's move on to the french cac now okay french cac let's go to the daily chart first and foremost okay so we've bounced off that key support zone at five two one two five two thirty 60 minute chart we've certainly pounced a uh, higher okay we're putting the topping tail towards the close if you use a fibonacci retracement tool from high to low okay you are looking at i mean ideally let's just take this from high to low okay so certainly two if we're actually retracement tools there, you're into that 50% and therefore looking for lower lows, lower highs to, to reign supreme. Okay, 10 minute chart on the French CAC at the moment. Really, you're in no man's land. Uh, you still have the unfilled gap left below. So again, that certainly needs to close. And Alex, I'd have expected that by now, given the fact that the euro is at 1.12 and that certainly hasn't been the case. So certainly is a shame. Okay, certainly is a shame. You have resistance at 5335 for now. Okay, so yes, the French CAC, you have a resistance here at 5335. Okay, you have unfilled gap at 5290, so we're oscillating between that. Okay, and certainly expecting that gap to close below, especially given the fact that uh, uh, Euro USD is currently knocking at 1.12, which is risk negative. That's how I would interpret that. Okay, now in terms of the FTSE 100, FTSE 100 certainly amazed me today, especially with the GBP. I mean, you know, overnight we were at uh, the pivot low around the 7430. As soon as uh, GBP crashed, we rallied up to 7480. And given the fact that GBP reverse totally did a full U-turn, I mean, look at GBP USD. One would have expected a full U-turn in the FTSE, so that hasn't occurred. You can see here, sell off, and then you can see a full U-turn now back up on GBP USD. But you'd expect the FTSE 100 to, to, to reverse as well, and that hasn't happened. So certainly seems to be some sort of disconnection here. When GBP USD goes lower, equities rip higher. When the GBP USD goes higher, equities just go tra trade sideways. So really confusing uh, picture there as well. So... Okay, so either way, we're into the uh, uh, the actual the daily chart. Let's go back to the daily chart. Okay, so certainly an inside bar, uh, bottoming tail. Okay, held up previous support equals resistance, uh, holding diagonal trend line for now. Okay, well, uh, it was an inside bar. I expected a potential reversal, and that hasn't occurred either. Okay, 60-minute chart is holding that FIB 61%. We failed to hold this key resistance zone here. We are trading out the channel, so therefore you are looking for a lower high. Bear that in mind. We're looking for a lower high. Okay, so we have the uh, Fib uh, into that Fib 61%. Okay, previous support equals resistance over here as well. So we're certainly holding that key zone. Okay, 10 minute chart again holding previous resistance equals support. You do have another resistance zone here. You have unfilled gap at uh, 7505. Certainly not expecting that to close. Although, yes, oil prices have helped. Uh, OPEC certainly jamming the price of oil. We're into that Fib 61% now. With oil prices about having a rebound in 43 up to 50, I mean, that's quite an impressive move. So we are looking for some hot air to be taken out here, especially with the rig count as well, certainly coming in higher, the uh, shale rig count. So uh, again, um, are, uh, is OPEC actually going to uh, cause the oil prices to go higher on this potential deepening cut to nine months as opposed to six? The jury is out. Okay, that's all I can say. The jury is out. Four hour chart, you certainly are ramming into resistance now. Previous support equals resistance, so this is a key resistance zone for oil, and therefore you are looking for a potential reversal, which in turn obviously causes the FTSE to reverse as well. 10 minute chart, the FTSE 100, it certainly seems that we've stalled now, double top here, looking for a mini HS, that's what I'd be looking for here, okay, looking for it to reverse and obviously looking to close that gap. I expected that gap to close all day, I was short the FTSE at 7470 zone, waited all day, waited all day, and nothing to no avail, okay. Eventually had to close for break even. Okay, so again we held that Fib seventy five at seven four eighty, and now looking to close that gap on the back of weaker oil and obviously on the back of uh, U.S. markets certainly reversing as well. The S and P now up to twenty three eighty six eighty seven. I mean that's very very impressive. Look at the S and P five hundred now reverse bounced. Okay, uh, your gap fill is at twenty four hundred. We're currently traded as high as twenty three eighty eight. We're only 12 points off the high, and that's on the back of, obviously, uh, all that carnage with regards to uh, Mr. Trump. Markets don't care. Mm, interesting, okay? Interesting, to say the least. Either way, that's the status quo, okay? We have to deal with it, and we have to trade accordingly. So, from my perspective, 7480 double top, looking for gap fill below at 7435. Bias certainly is on the, on the downside, especially given the fact that you have sterling above 1.13, okay? 
uh, stronger uh, currency certainly hurting the export side of the equation looking at the FTSE 250 daily chart still capped at resistance obviously that's your perfect gauge okay certainly has bounced I mean we've certainly bounced the back of a weaker sterling and now obviously expected to remain capped on the back of a um, stronger sterling so again just taking the pivot highs uh, GBPU uh, FTSE 250 is certainly coming into turbulence looking for risk aversion to kick in in terms of euro stocks last but not least okay this is a trade that i've taken and i'm actually short on right now okay so really it's um oh, well, you call it a bullish engulfing candle it's basically a, a oversold bounce really off that uh, 3530 zone into that 3590 zone now uh, using your fibonacci retracement here just bear with me. so using your fibonacci retracement here from here to here Okay, sorry about that. Okay, so in terms of the uh, the actual euro stocks, a bearish setup here. We're calling it into fifty to fifty percent, looking at sixty one percent retracement, and then looking to potentially flush lower here on the euro stocks. Ten minute chart certainly capped at that three five ninety zone, so therefore looking for a flush lower and uh, looking for lower prices here as well. Okay, so bias certainly remains negative. That's my interpretation. Okay, even though yes, we have uh, recovered quite impressively. Okay, the bears certainly dictate and rule. And certainly will remain supreme here as well going into the close. That's my interpretation. Anyway, the Nasdaq certainly has an unfilled gap left behind. You have an unfilled gap that needs to close at 35, or sorry, 56.25. So again, I think we will certainly be looking to uh, target that gap below, uh, especially going into a weekend. Mr. Trump's antics, a lot of fear, uncertainty. You'd be an idiot to keep uh, a long position open over the weekend. But again, this market has, has risen uh, due to idiots. So obviously take that into account as well. On that note, uh, be, please be sure to visit cfds.com for your trading needs and be sure to visit TradeSignal for the latest trade signals and market updates from leading providers. Goodbye now.